This is a Zeiss SL120 and I'm just going to give a few overview adjustments that you can make in the doctor's office. You'll notice the Zeiss focus rod is much longer than a regular focus rod. You can make your own. If you don't have a Zeiss focus rod, you can make your own by getting your regular focus rod putting some tape about three-eighths of an inch below where it normally rests and it won't go down as far and then it'll be as, as high as you need to be able to see your, your, your light. If you needed to adjust your light up or down, right here on this prism, you have a screw here. Uh, you'd have to use some acetone to uh, get the the glue, whatever's glued down, and you can adjust it up or down, which will make your light go up or down depending on how you screw. If you need to go sideways, you have screws up here on top of your prism cap, two screws on either side. Loosen those. You can adjust, make some minor adjustments there, and then tighten them back up. If you needed to center your hole in the center of the focus rod, if, if these things aren't going to help you, you need to go a little deeper. So to, to do that, you'd have to go get inside this cap. And to do that, you'd have to take these two Allen screws off and these two knobs off. And to get those off, put something to insulate the, your pliers so you don't scratch up your knob. Hold it. Get your socket. This is a 7 millimeter or 932nd. And loosen it. Probably half is probably all you would need, and then you can pull it off. Pull off both knobs and get your get to your nut by using a razor blade to pull the caps off so you can get to those nuts. Once you have those all off, take your cover off. And this is your centering adjustment. If it's off center one way or the other, you can loosen these two spacer screws that are on spacers, and then you can pull you can pull it one way or the other to get it centered. Push your spacers back together tighten them up, and then check it to make sure you've got it centered. You can also do some adjusting by messing with these two adjustments on either side of here. You can go a little bit, you can move it up or down, whatever, but I'll try not to mess with it too much. Okay? You get that right, put your cover back on. Put your knobs back on, and remember to leave a little bit of space so it's not pushing all the way when you tighten these back up. Pull them out just a little bit. Hold it, and then tighten it back up. So you have a little space in here so when you're turning them, they're not rubbing up against the cover. Okay, some other things you can do. The cover is if your if your slits are dirty, there's some kind of dust or dirt on them. You take these two screws off, move this over. A lens in here that you would get your crescent wrench and loosen it so you can turn it to take it off. Then you can have access to your slits and your diaphragm. 
and get to all your diaphragms to clean them. Look in there and if your mirror's all cruddy in there, you can either, you can get, you can clean the mirror if that's going to help you. Make sure it's all clean. And But then to check it, you've got to screw this back on. And you can just hold it there and turn it on and look through here and see, have you, is it clean? Have you cleaned it enough? And if not, well, you have to do it again. Okay. You have to keep doing it until you, you get it clean. Okay, once you, you've gotten it clean, then you can put your screws back on. And when, you, when you're readjusting this light housing, you've got to turn it on and look at your light to get the cleanest light. Turn your, your diaphragm to the largest size to get so you can see the maximum light. And you're going to have to adjust it in and out to get your maximum light on your focus rod. Then you can tighten those up. And then you put your cover back on. One thing you can do, if you're looking through it and your focus, you keep, it's not focused, you can adjust the focus when it's zero. If you know, if you know what zero looks like and your eyes are good or whatever, so the mags on the lowest and the highest should be clear in your focus rod. If if it's not clear at your highest mag, 32, then it's possible that your head is needs to be adjusted. You need to go in or out. And to be able to do that, there's two Allens under here, one on each side. Just loosen them a little bit, and then you can pull your head back and forth to get it nice and sharp get your focus. You can tighten them a little bit so that you're, you're just barely moving it. Get it in focus. And then you can snug them up and then check it. Is it good at 32? Is it good at all of them? Are they all in focus? And if, if you're right, make sure your head is adjusted by Looking at the space of your view between, on each side of your focus rod, are they even? And also you can look and see if your prism head is going to be in the way. You can see, okay, what's going to be the center to adjust your head one way or the other? Yeah, you'll just have to mess with it. But hopefully you won't have to do that very often because that, that doesn't get out of adjustment very often unless it's bumped or in transportation or something. Now, when you're looking through this, you might notice that the prism tower seems to be in, in the way of one side of your eyepiece more than the other. And one way you can adjust for that is Look, look at your, look at where your detent lies, and is, is your light assembly, is it centered? If not, then it could be, once again, that, that something has, has misaligned your, your axis index pin. And you can, sometimes if it's really out, you can tell this is not really centered. So, your access pin alignment are these two screws and one on this side. The screw on the back here pushes your pin that way. If you wanted to get tighter detent, and one on the other side pushes it back. If you need to go left and right, this, this screw right here, this adjustment, can make your pin go left or right. So, but you shouldn't have to mess with those. I'm just showing you what they are. If you 
needed to get inside this head, which there aren't really, there's nothing you can really adjust really. Now this is a conversion head, and there's possibility you can, you can adjust each individual eyepiece by messing with these lenses. If you've got to go deep, you take off the cover, and <laughs> you'd have to mess with your prism alignments with these screws. adjusting your prism, but hopefully you'll never have to do that. If something happened, something might have dropped, whatever. So, not easy, not fun, probably wouldn't recommend just anybody doing it. I'm going to zoom down here a little bit. I've already got my axle out because I wanted to show you a little bit about this locking mechanism. To, in this locking mechanism, you have your, your knob, you have a spring, and then you have a little plunger pin that may, may wear out. And so the way to get to that is move, move your axle out of the way, take your pliers and hold, hold the knob, while you unscrew it, take that off. Pull your spring out if it has a spring. It should. If it's, if it's not there, then it's missing. And then your plunger pin. This is your drag. This is your drag. Your lock is back here. This is your drag. Take your spring out, and then you can, you can turn. That's where it f falls down. But then how would you get it out? There's a screw on the very bottom. If you take that screw out, then you can pull. Pull the whole thing out, okay? See, there's a screw on the bottom that holds it. And then this, you can't, you can't unscrew it through the housing. But if you, if you pull out, pull it out, you can unscrew it. But this is like an irreplaceable part. There, there is no part. If you, if you don't have that, then uh, you, you're not going to have a drag. And don't, don't drill that out and put a, your own. Okay, make sure that washer's in there, that little nylon washer. And to put this back in, you just go ahead and screw it down, let it fall in. Place it in. Push it up enough to start unscrewing it. And it's going to unscrew. It's going to un actually unscrew into your base. Okay, once it's up all the way, it's not going to come up anymore. Well, you could put your screw on the bottom of it first to hold it in place. But yeah, you'd need that. Put your plunger, the little end in first. Spring. And then your knob. You would hold it, tighten it down. And that's going to be your drag for your axle. If you needed to get inside here, there's a few things you can do to take the housing off. There's a screw on each side. Screw here, screw there. Raise it up all the way. You can lift it up. Joystick straight up. Come on up. Lift it up over the joystick and then pull it out. Then you have another cover here. A screw on each side. Similarly, pull it out. Now you have access to your rheostat and 
I'm going to turn this. Okay. The rear stat housing has got four screws. I've already taken them out. And your, your lock is over here. On your lock, You have a little nylon pin here that's adjustable. Uh, if that nylon pin is gone, I, I'm, I don't know what you're going to do because that nylon pin pushes against this bar, which affects your lock. Okay, and you can do some adjustments to make it come forward more or back. To, if it'll help your lock a little bit, you'll just have to experiment on that and see see what's going to work. And then you can get to your rear step or potentiometer right in here. You can also have access to your spur wheel. Sometimes those go bad. If you'll notice on the spur wheel, the pin here matches right at, at the point of your spur wheel where it's reinforced and that's your stop. Then you down your down stop is right here. So you're gonna want your pin to line line up on either of these two reinforced areas whether it's up or down, and it's going to take a little bit of uh, maneuvering up and down, te testing to see if, if that's the right spot. You just go up and down to where it almost goes all the way down. Then you can insert your spur wheel right where the pin is going to match up with it and to see maybe that's the spot. Or if not, okay, maybe it's uh, another 360 degrees. Anyway, you should be able to figure it out once you you see it. It's pretty neat. Okay. Okay. And you would put everything back together: your screws, your covers, and that's a little bit on the. SL120 Zeiss. And that's all for this video. Okay, one other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to show you a diagram of the parts of your lock. And your potentiometer.